quick show of hands. I read the registration list, it was probably a month ago. How many brands, retailers do we have in the room that have brick and mortar stores? Okay, um, so this is probably gonna be most relevant for you. Um, so I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to talk about Omnichannel. I, I think clearly Omnichannel is the buzzword or one of the key buzzwords in retail today. And it is for a reason. Candidly, retailers that are doing Omnichannel and are doing it well are winning. They're the retailers that have higher comp stores, sales growth. They're the retailers that have better margins. They're the retailers that are increasing consumer loyalty. They're the retailers that are leveraging their store footprint to compete and win against Amazon, right? Everybody talks about Amazon, one day delivery, two day delivery, drones. How do I compete against that? Your store network is part of how you compete against that. So I'm really gonna talk about three things this morning. Just a little bit on why store fulfillment, why it is the buzzword, why people are doing it, why you should be doing it if you're not. Share some thoughts on how to implement and execute it well. Because there's also a difference between doing it and doing it well. And we've seen the difference with our clients. And then finally, just share some additional thoughts on you know, benefits to the retailer and benefits to the consumer. So let's get started. Clearly there's a shift. Alexis talked about it this morning. Right, mobile is taking over the world. Smartphones are becoming ubiquitous. I don't know about you, I have teenagers at home. And, and at times I feel like their smartphone has now become a body part. Right, they're constantly connected. Research actually says 91% of consumers are connected to their mobile device 24 by 7. Forrester says, right, we've always talked about web having an influence on online sales. Forrester's predicting that by 2017, two short years, 60% of all retail sales will be influenced by web and mobile. There is no more online and offline. Consumers just shop when, where, and how they want. And they want choice and convenience in terms of when and where and how they get their product. The world has changed. Retailers need to change to catch up. Today, 40% of purchases are omnichannel. 57% of consumers buy online and pick up in store. And over 82% of consumers want to be able to buy online when they're in your store. And we've all heard the stats, right? An omnichannel customer is three to four, four, four times more valuable than a single channel customer. We all know that. So consumers want it. Yet, Today, retailers aren't delivering. Only 24% of retailers do in-store pickup and do it well. 37% don't even do it at all. 24% do ship from store and do it well. In this case, 40% don't do it at all. And in in-store ordering, only 30% do it, do it well. You get a sense of the trend. 24% of retailers rank Omnichannel as their top priority. I'm not sure if this is good or bad. Part of me says, okay, 24% top priority, it's important, but what about the other 76%? Maybe those are the 24% that are actually doing this well. It's good for your business and it's good for consumers. Tell me one person in this room that wouldn't want these stats associated with your business. Year one, ship from store, 20 to 40% lift in your e-commerce business. A decrease in shipping cost associated with those store orders. A 30% lift in margin, right? Stuff that you're overstocked in store A, you're now selling somewhere else, you're reducing markdowns. Store, entire channel sales lift, two to 7%. Retailers are struggling today, right? Comp Comp sales store growth is not great. Two to seven percent pickup. And it's a great consumer experience. 80% get their orders in one day, 90% in two days. That's how you compete against the Amazon. And oh, by the way, your consumers, not only do they get their order faster, all of a sudden they're, they're, they've got this perception that you're never out of stock. Right? You always have what I want when I want it. It's kind of a feel like, wow, there's brand loyalty there, right? You've got surprise and delight in terms of getting it fast. 
and you've got inventory availability. So it's great for brand loyalty. Just one final stat, right? Retail order management, probably another big buzzword today. Why is everybody looking at retail order management? Because of omnichannel. Five of the top six reasons why people are looking at retail order management system is to enable omnichannel. I think the simple message is, it is a necessity in today's world. I use the analogy of mobile, I don't know, four years ago maybe, putting up a website 10 or 12 years ago, right, went from a fad, went from a nice to have, quickly became a necessity. I believe strongly omnichannel is going through that same shift. Going from a nice to have that, that some retailers are doing to a necessity. And if you're not doing it and not doing it well, you're not going to be successful. So how do you do it well? Right? Hopefully I've convinced you you should be doing it if you're not. How do you do it well and what are we going to talk about? I'm really going to just talk, you could talk, in 20 minutes it's hard, right? There's a lot to cover. I'm really going to talk about three things. Um, ship from store, and, and really this is increasing your online sales. Ship from store saying if you've got inventory anywhere in your store network that is always available to your online consumer, regardless if you're out of stock at your, your, your e-commerce distribution center. In-store pickup is more about driving store traffic and consumer choice and convenience. I want it today. I want free shipping. I'm going by the store anyway. For the retailer, it drives store foot traffic. Again, tell me a retailer today that's thrilled with their increases in store foot traffic. Nobody is, right? In-store pickup helps solve that. And then in-store associate ordering, to me, is kind of the analogy of ship from store. This is never lose a sale in-store. So if you don't have the size color they're looking for, but you've got it somewhere else in your network, anywhere else in your network, you save that sale. So the combination of ship from store and associate ordering means a customer, no matter what channel they're trying to buy from, if you've got inventory anywhere, you can capture that sale. So ship from store. I'll talk later about priorities. I think this is one of the first ones. So how do you do it? What do you have to do to do it well? First is inventory. It is all about inventory. You've got to have a system that can aggregate all of your points of inventory. Your stores, your distribution centers, your third-party distribution centers, right? You've got to have all that inventory in one system. You've got to think about what products do you want to make available. Is it everything? Or do you have limits on price points and margins? Some retailers say, hey, it's all about the consumer experience. This is going to build brand loyalty, customer loyalty. I don't care if I lose money in a given order, because over time, I'm going to, I'm going to have a more valued consumer. Other brand, brands and retailers say, wait a minute, I can't afford to lose money in an order. I got to have limits, right? There are certain categories, there are certain price points. I, I'm not going to offer this. It's a decision you've got to make and think about. Store level inventory. It's got to be accurate. And, and trust me today, it's not. You'll be shocked at how bad your store level inventory accuracy is. We had one client that turned on ship from store the week after they did their store physical inventories. Store physicals on the weekend, turned on ship from store on Monday. They could not believe they had 30% of their orders, or call it pick decline, in the first store. We just did store inventory. How could it be that bad? Now, granted, right, they're a retailer that's it's wide and, and not very deep, but they were amazed, right? They've got work to do. So then what's your safety stock level, right? How do you update available to purchase? So inventory and getting inventory right in one system is, is kind of the first thing you've got to be able to do. Second, how do you route those orders? I'm actually going to talk a little more detail about order routing. But it's usually around close to the consumer, minimize split shipments, and in some inventory optimization along with hey, do I, limit, do I need to limit stores based on their capacity? And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Store operations and training is critical and often overlooked. Where do you set up the pack station? What are the protocols and procedures? How do I have my associates pick these orders without interfering with my in-store consumer experience? Staffing, 
many retailers can find off-peak, they've got slack labor in their stores to can take care of this, these orders, right? In the morning, store opening, I've got 20 orders to pick, I can get that done right before we get busy. During peak, most retailers are gonna have to hire extra labor, right? Dedicated associates just to do this. Many retailers open early, particularly ship from store, right? Open early and execute these orders before store opening. So you've gotta have an understanding of your demand, your labor, and, and probably some specialization around peak to handle the volume. Training, what's your attrition level in your stores? 30%, 40%, 50%, right? So not only have you got to train in the beginning, but you've got an ongoing training process. You want the consumer to have the same experience, right? You've got elaborate, probably QC procedures and pack out procedures in your centralized distribution center. You don't want the consumer to feel like when they got that order, because they don't know, it came from a store, right? It's not packed to your brand image. You've got to have good execution, you've got to have good training, how do you manage shipping SLAs, supplies, things like box sizes. You're probably not gonna have as many, be, have a space to have as many box sizes, right, in your stores as you do in your distribution center. You have to make some trade-offs, right? It'll impact shipping cost. But those are decisions you've gotta think about how you manage. Most stores have limited square feet, right? You're, you're, you wanna, you, your square feet is focused on your retail space, and, and you're trying to be as, as smart and optimal as you can of how much space you utilize for this. Pickup times with the carriers. What are the rules? How do you escalate with the carrier if they mix a, miss a pickup? KPIs and reporting. We all know measurements drive behavior, right? We all know what measure gets improved. It's critical to have those measurements at a store level, reporting against that to drive behavior. And, and this may seem obvious, but people struggle with this. You've got to give the store credit You've got to give the store associate credit for that order. Regardless if it's an online sale, regardless if it came from a different store, if they're not getting some form of credit and incentive to execute those orders, it's not going to get done. Order routing. The honest answer is you can start with, with very simplified. I have a client that turned on ship from store, they're basically saying, hey, store closest to the customer, try to limit split shipments, and, and no optimization. Six months in, they are thrilled. Incremental sales growth, double digit, better margins, because all of a sudden inventory that was stuck in a store that it wasn't selling, they were gonna have to mark down and liquidate, they're selling at full price. But six to nine months in, you're gonna say, hey, wait a minute, I can do better, right? I can optimize. So you start thinking more about your inventory. You start thinking about safety stock levels by type. In-store pickup versus ship from store is a good example, right? You want a different safety stock level. If it's ship from store, you can route to a different store. In-store pickup, you can't. How do you handle in-flight orders? Do you reroute them? Can you, what about cancellations? Store settings. Many retailers go with an ABC strategy, right, around their stores. Um, they want to limit, right, certain stores, maximum units, orders per day they can handle. Can every store do gift wrap? So all these things are an optimization. And then order allocation. For sure you want to do everything you can to eliminate split shipments. Split shipments will definitely, is the one thing, red flag to watch out for, that'll hurt your overall economics. Point being, there's lots of opportunities with a robust order routing system to optimize. Another good example is regional or you know, local inventory. Licensed sporting goods is a great example, right? Put your Falcons and Braves inventory in Atlanta. Put the Jets in New York and whatever it may be. It's, it's in your stores, you're gonna maximize the opportunity to sell it in store, but then it's gonna be close to most of your consumers are gonna buy it online. So again, retailers have evolved to forward deploying inventory to stores to leverage the channel. In-store pickup is harder. Inventory is more critical. Right now, the consumer's order, they're driving their store, they're gonna show up. If you don't have it, that's a terrible consumer experience. Ship from store, you can always fulfill it somewhere else. And candidly, it's about, you know, this is consumer choice and convenience. It does drive store traffic. The average consumer, 37% of the time, buys something else. So where do you put that pickup location? Right, without being terribly inconvenient, but put it someplace that'll help that upsell. Do you train your associates to have an item available, right, that's a complimentary purchase? 
How do you leverage that store traffic, right, to increase the order value? And some of the same stuff applies around training, around compensation, around procedures. Typically, you've got a tighter window, though, right? Ship from store, hey, you've got till 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock to get it ready. You may give your consumers a two-hour, three-hour window to pick up. So now you've got to be more thoughtful, again, about that picking process, particularly if you think about high store traffic times, isn't interfering with your in-store consumer experience. In-store associate ordering is all about associate engagement and training to be able to engage with your consumers. Consumers have to know what's available. They have to know that if, in, if I'm in your store and you don't have my size color, I can order it online and it'll ship to my house in free, for free. So you've got to make sure they know it's available. And again, it's all about your associate's ability to engage with that consumer and capture that lost sale. So the benefits, ship from store, is capturing lost sales, right, in your online business because you're leveraging inventory anywhere. You're eliminating out of stocks. You're giving a great consumer experience. Consumers all of a sudden feel like, wow, this retailer is now doing a better job of meeting or exceeding my expectations. And for the retailer, right, it's incremental revenue, it's less markdowns, it's utilizing your store assets that might be underutilized. In-store pickup is more about choice and convenience for the consumer. It certainly helps solve the free shipping dilemma, right, we faced with, that all of a sudden free shipping, the, the consumer's doing the work. Less data on it truly being incremental revenue. Um, and it does drive store traffic, right? So one of the benefits of retailers is it drives store traffic. And an associate's ordering is about saving those in-store sales. We've seen a 2 to 7% lift in chain sales, total chain sales, if consumers, if retailers do this and do it well. Prioritization. I, I can't tell you how many retailers have come to us and said, hey, we want to do omnichannel, and we want to start with in-store pickup. Because our foot traffic in our stores is going down. We know we need to get our online customers in our stores. And so we want to do in-store pickup. And I challenge them with the inventory accuracy equation. And back to it's a terrible consumer experience if they show up and it's not there. It's also, most data says, the least incremental revenue. And you don't have the, 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 the markdown effect, right? Because the consumer's picking the store. You're not picking the store that's got the most aged inventory. So I would argue in-store pickup is the hardest and it has the least incremental value. Start with ship from store. Start with associate ordering. Walk before you run. Figure out your store procedures. Figure out how good your store level inventory is. Get that right. 6, 9, 12, 18 months. Then evolve to in-store pickup. And of course, hey, there's, there's things about your price point. Are you wide and narrow versus narrow and deep? There's, there's lots of factors that can go into this decision uh, and which ones you do first. But that's, that's our guidance in terms of how to prioritize. I think I'm out of time, um, but I am here both today and tomorrow. I'm, I'm actually hosting a round table on this topic today and tomorrow. Uh, eBay Enterprise, formerly known as GSI Commerce, uh, we've got a booth. Uh, so myself or some of my colleagues would be happy to answer any of your questions uh, in our booth as well. So thank you for your time and your attention, and uh, <laughs> seek me out if you have questions. We do have time for uh, one or two questions. If you've got a question before we go to break, raise your hand and the mics will come to you. Right over here. Here, mine's probably closest. Uh, Mark Solomon with DC Velocity Magazine. Can you explain how an omni-channel strategy can reduce shipping costs by 25 to 30 percent? Because that seems like a significant reduction. Great question. Let me, good, good clarifying question. Let me put the context around that. So it's a little bit of a blend. I mean, in-store pickup obviously becomes free, right? There is no cost associated with shipping with in-store pickup. But and then hold on. Hold on, but then ship from store is really those specific orders, not 25 to 30% in total, right? So from those orders, typically it's a zone one, right? Zone one or zone two shipment from your DC, on average, it's a zone four. So really it's because you're doing, you're, you've got that zone pickup because of proximity on that specific order, you're reducing your shipping costs. 